What's up everybody, it's Matt from Night and Day Performance back with another video. Today I'm working on the 2018 Dodge Durango for City Limits that we built. Um, we're just doing some quick checks. It came in for its normal servicing. Um, we're changing out the plugs and we're going to go ahead and do a compression test just to see how the motor's doing overall. When it left, it had great compression. So we just want to make sure that nothing has changed over the time frame. And we just decided we'd go ahead and show you guys, if you don't know how, you can do a normal, simple DIY compression test. Um, I went and grabbed our, our cheap kit, which is right behind me here. Okay, this is a compression test you can get right over at Harbor Freight. They're very cheap. I mean, it's probably like 30, 40 bucks. Um, and it has a gauge on it here that you'll see. And it kind of is dummy proof. I mean, it does show you green and red, uh, meaning that, you know, Right here, it's showing right around 100 PSI is going to be right where your safe range is. It depends on your vehicle. Look up your vehicle's recommended press, um, compression and what you need to have for cold, for hot, etc., etc. The best way to do your compression test is when the vehicle is up to temperature. However, this can be hot, so be very careful. The vehicle, what you want to do is you want to drive it until your uh, coolant temperature, your oil temperature, everything's up to temperature in the normal range. Then you want to come back, park it. Um, and take your coil packs off go ahead and or you know plug wires whatever you have for your application um, You're gonna pull if it has one spark plug per cylinder pull that one spark plug out The easiest way to do it and the easiest on your starter is to go ahead and take all of your plugs out um, That are not needed that way your engine rotates more freely um, This also will help with your starter not having a whole bunch of drag sitting there constantly getting hot um, So when you do that what you're gonna do is you're gonna take on this one's a hemi There's two plugs per cylinder so we're going to take one plug out of each cylinder on both banks. So the easiest way to go ahead and make sure you know which fitting you have, because there are a variety of fittings that come with the kit, is to, of course, take one of the fittings. This one is the one that comes on it. I don't like using the attachments if I don't have to because of the simple fact that the attachments like to get stuck in the cylinder head sometimes and they're a pain to get out. Um, but take your spark plug that you pulled out and match the two together and find which one thread pitch looks the same. And that'll tell you, you can also look up the specs for your spark plugs and look up the specs on these. It's another way to do it. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the fuse box um, on the vehicle. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna pull the fuses for the fuel pump and or the fuel injectors. You wanna disconnect any coil packs or anything like that because you don't want the car to start with the conditions that we're gonna do. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to actually thread this portion down in where your spark plug hole is. And this is disconnected for the gauge. You're going to connect the gauge. And you're going to actually start the car. If you have a push button, just push the button. Um, and then you're, you have a key, you turn the key on and off. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to listen for two to three rotations of the engine. That way we can make sure that it has a full cycle. Um, and what we're checking for is the compression. The compression is basically the measurement of the pressure inside of the cylinder. Because um, when pistons come up and the valves are closed on the head, you're compressing that air. Of course, you get a fuel mixture with that, and then a spark comes into play, which causes the combustion process, which sends the piston back down with force, um, and that's how you make your power in your vehicles. Um, on this one right here, this is a Gen 3 Hemi. Nine times out of 10 on the Gen 3 Hemis, the specs you're gonna on average see is between 160 to around 220. Um, and what you wanna look for is make sure that there's not any more than a 10 PSI difference between your cylinders. Um, if you start having one that's at 160 and you have all the rest of them that are at 200, 220, you know that that cylinder is starting to have some issues. Um, and you might want to get that looked at or you can look at it yourself if you're wanting to rebuild your engine. Um, things can be like rings. It could be the valves um, not closing properly from carbon buildup. It could be several things. Um, but if all of your readings are you know, around the same, you're good. If you get one that has no compression, you have a problem. If you have one that's in the red, or if all of them are in the red area, like 90, 60 PSI, that's when you're starting to get the indication that you need to do a rebuild. Um, enough of me talking now, I'm gonna get into it. I'm gonna let you watch my hands. You won't see my face. I'm gonna actually show you while I'm doing the process. Um, you'll hear a brief pause. I'll have the camera focused on this portion of it. I'm gonna go in the vehicle and I'm gonna cycle it over and you'll see it build pressure. Once the pressure is built, I'm gonna check the readings, notate the readings, 
hit the little button to release the pressure, move on to the next one. I'm gonna do that for each cylinder so I can get a complete compression test done on this vehicle. Stay tuned. So there you go, you're just gonna screw that in. Just do it by hand. And you're not gonna use any tools to tighten this. You don't wanna get this stuck or broken there. Twist it till it doesn't move, pull it. Make sure it's seated. If it's not seated, it will blow out. I'm gonna set this gauge here so you can watch. I'm gonna go cycle over the vehicle. So of course the gauge didn't stay where I wanted it to. <laughs> Alright, so if you followed the video up to this point, I appreciate you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Um, everything you do to the channel as far as like, subscribing, and share helps to get our word out to more people and helps us continue to do what we're, we keep doing. Um, like I said, I appreciate it. I'm Matt from Night and Day Performance. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'm out.